Hi friends, my name is Julie and welcome back to our channel. Today we're out here at Green Sky Farm checking their goats for some parasites. In this video, we're gonna go over some of the different types of parasites, some of the symptoms to watch for in your goats or sheep, what sort of things you wanna check on physical exam, and how to identify the type of parasite so you know the right way to treat it. So if you suspect illness in your goats or sheep, one of the first things you actually wanna look at is whether it's nutritional or a mineral deficiency. But unfortunately, most of the time, it's what we call worms or internal parasites. Now there are several different types of parasites. You can have external parasites such as lice or mange, or you can have internal parasites. And those mainly affect the gut, but there are ones that affect also the lungs and the nervous system. So you really need to identify what enemy you're dealing with. Now by far the largest killer of goats and sheep is the barber pole worm, which is a parasite of the digestive tract. It's also a blood sucking parasite. So it will cause anemia in your animals. Other common types of internal parasites are the strong giles family, which includes the bankrupt worm, the brown stomach worm, and the thread worm. And the other common parasite that you'll need to deal with is called coccidia. And that's actually a protozoa. And the most common symptom associated with coccidia is diarrhea. Also very common parasite is tapeworms. And those are one of the only ones that you will frequently see in the feces. Your animal will shed segments of the tapeworm and it'll look like moving little grains of rice in their poop. For pretty much all other parasites, it's very rare that you're actually going to see the adult worm. What you're gonna wanna do is look for eggs and you have to do that with a microscope. Now for all of these internal parasites, they really tend to multiply in warm, wet weather. So in the winter months, you don't have to worry about them as much, but if you do establish a load in the gut of your animal, during the summer months, they can carry that into the winter. So it's not a guarantee that they'll be parasite free any time of the year. Some of the common symptoms that you may associate with parasites or worms in your animals are diarrhea, weight loss, inappetence or an unwillingness to eat, slowed growth or stunted growth, and a separation from the herd. In cases of more advanced disease, you might see anemia, and we'll go over how to check for that on the eyelids of the goats. And unfortunately, parasites often result in death, and that could be sudden onset. So it's really good to periodically check your herd, even if they seem like everything is fine. For each adult worm that infects the gut of your sheep or goat, they can produce up to a thousand eggs a day. So you can imagine how quickly an infection can spread. Your animals are dropping a lot of those eggs in their feces, spreading them on your pastures or where your animals eat and infecting more of your herd. So if you can eliminate the ones that are carrying those big worm loads and shedding all of those eggs, you can really diminish the population of parasites for your whole herd. So the first thing I do when I suspect any sort of disease in my goats or sheep is to give them a, a physical exam. When I first catch them, I wanna make a mental note of how strong they are, if they fight, if they seem really weak, then that's really uh, a very good indication that something is very wrong. But this little guy was actually pretty hard to catch, so that's a good sign. Then I kinda wanna feel his body condition. So you wanna feel his top line and make sure he's got some fat on his loin. He's a tiny bit on the thin side, but Considering these are a dairy breed of goat, that's not too concerning. I can feel his hip bones a little bit, but he's got a tiny bit of fat on him. And his ribs are not protruding in any way. There's a good cover on them. So he's actually not uh, a bad weight. Of course, you can always weigh your goats if you have that ability. And that's a really good way to keep track of their progression and their health. Just like when you take your dog or cat to your vet, you're just gonna check the basics on them. You wanna look and make sure that they don't have a lot of crud in their ears and no mites in there. So that looks good. You wanna look at <laughs> their teeth, especially in an older animal. It's not uncommon for goats and sheep to be missing teeth or have crooked teeth, but you wanna make sure there's no abscesses or bloody gums or anything like that that would be irritating them because that can be a reason for weight loss. And he looks good. All right. And then the main thing that I'm gonna check is their eyes. So there is a system called FAMACHA, 
where you check for the level of anemia on the mucous membrane on the inner eyelid of the animal. And you wanna see it red or dark pink. And this guy actually looks really good. So another common sign of anemia, especially when it's more progressed, is they will actually get a fluid sac under their jaw, and this is referred to as bottle jaw. That would indicate a very serious level of anemia, and you want to treat that animal right away. I also want to look at their hooves. An animal whose foot hurts is just not gonna thrive very well. This guy could use a trim, but I don't see any sign of hoof rot or anything that would be causing him pain. So that looks really good, and if we can turn him around, we definitely want to check their butt. If they've had diarrhea recently, you will see residue, and actually his looks really nice and clean. The fur down his legs looks nice and clean, so I don't think there's any reason to be concerned. So this guy, looking pretty good. The next step would be to actually do a fecal test and see if he's got any worm eggs in there. So if your animal is showing some hair loss, that's a good indication that they might have an external parasite. And if you split the hair, sometimes you'll see like little fleas running around, and those are actually goat lice. It's really, really common. And there's a good topical medication that you can get. External parasites like lice can cause anemia as well. So we're gonna go ahead and check his eyelids. And he's actually a pretty good level of pink, so it's probably not an advanced case. If we go ahead and get him treated right now, he should be just fine. So some people will just regularly treat their whole herd for worms, just blanket deworm everybody, but that's not the recommended best practice anymore. It's actually best to identify the exact species of parasite that you have, whether it's at a high enough infection level to treat, and then choose the proper dewormer for that parasite. There are a couple ways to get a fecal test done. Pretty much every veterinarian will do one for you. They tend to be between 10 and $20. All you have to do is drop off the fecal sample and you'll get a report usually the same day. You can also send off the poop to a lab. If you Google fecal tests online, you'll be able to find a lab that you can actually mail it to. The other option, and that's what we've opted for, is to actually get a home microscope. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can get a kid's or a student microscope. You don't need a lot of magnification. I got this one off of Amazon. I believe it was about $250. It has uh, four levels of mag magnification. Either the 4X or the 10X magnification will work just fine for seeing worm eggs in your sample. You do need a power source uh, because this has a light and that's how you see what's on the slide. Supplies that you're gonna need. You're gonna need something to hold your fecal sample in. These little disposable cups are really nice. They have an insert that helps you kind of mash the poop. You wanna mash it down because you wanna kind of make a slurry of the poop and the worm eggs are gonna rise to the top and that's how you get them on your slide. You're gonna need a fecal solution. There are recipes you can find to make this with Epsom salts and sugar on your own, but you can also just order the solution. I like to have a separate vessel to actually run my sample with. And then you're gonna need microscope slides and slide covers. Having a soft wipe that won't damage the lens is also a good idea. This method is known as the fecal float method. There's also a method known as the McMaster method or using the McMaster slide where it actually has a grid so that you can count the eggs more easily. But this is just a simple method that um, I actually learned as a vet tech. So we're gonna go with this one today. Now we've followed around these goats and we've gotten fresh samples from each of them. I've labeled them so I know who they're from. You need to collect fresh poop. The fresher the better. You can keep it in the fridge for up to 24 hours if you need to before you test it. I followed this goat around and actually watched it just drop these pe pellets. That's best. And you need about a gram of feces. That's one to two berries or pellets of poop. So you insert the poop in the bottom of your vessel and then you use this part to kind of smash it up, break, break up the pellets. Next, you need your fecal solution. And you're gonna put a little bit at the bottom and then you're gonna reinsert this part and create a slurry of that poop because you need the eggs to rise to the top. So once you feel like that's broken down pretty well, 
secure that insert in there and then you're gonna wanna fill the rest of that to the top, creating a small ellipsis of fluid. And be very careful not to nudge your table while you're doing this or it will spill. And then you need to grab your cover slides. All right, you only need one. Sometimes they stick together. They're very thin. Kind of check for air bubbles on top if you have a lot. Um, you can actually use the corner of the slide to pop those, but there's no air bubbles here. So you just wanna put that on top. I did get a little air bubble there, but that's fine, nothing to worry about. Now we're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes and then we'll put that cover slide on the actual microscope slide, put it on our microscope and we'll start counting eggs. So after these samples have sat for at least 10 minutes, you'll see that some debris has risen to the surface. <laughs> the worm eggs are gonna rise to the surface as well and they're gonna stick to my cover slip. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a slide right now. And we're gonna start with the first one. We'll do these in order of how we set them up. You wanna drop the cover slip on there in a way that kind of smushes the air out. You don't need it to cover the entire area, but that's about what it should look like. We're gonna put the slide on our microscope and secure it. I'm gonna turn my light on. So I find the corner of that cover slip. Getting your field of view in focus initially can be a little tricky. There we go. All right, so once I've got a good view of the corner of my slide, I'm just gonna slowly look across it in a grid fashion. So I'm gonna snake back and forth across the slide, adjusting my focus a little bit because even though it's a thin layer of fluid on that slide, you're gonna see different planes of view, which means some of the objects will be close to the surface and some will be close to the bottom of the slide. So kind of have to play with your focus the whole time. But I wanna cover the whole slide. So far, so good. Not seeing anything other than some plant debris. So as you look at your slide, you're gonna wanna record any varieties of parasite eggs that you see and if there are a number of them, you're gonna record how many. Now, if you're looking at a gram of poop like I did, you're gonna want to multiply that by 50 and that will give you the eggs per gram count. And you can find um, charts online that will help you decide whether that count is high enough to treat your animal or if it's an acceptable load. Now, a small load of parasites in your animals can actually be a good thing. It can keep their immune system aware and alert and fighting those parasites. And that's really what you want. You want the animal to grow up being able to resist the parasites on their own without any chemical dewormer help. If they do have a load that's making them sick, you're gonna wanna deworm them. And there are also really good places online to go. I can link those below where you can find good charts for the type of dewormer and the dose that you wanna give your animal. Most medications that you give your animal, the dose is gonna be based on weight. If you're not very good at estimating, it's good to have a scale. You can do this with a bathroom scale. You can weigh yourself, hold the animal and calculate the difference. But these guys actually have a scale. So we're gonna get a weight on this guy and then we're gonna go online, we're gonna look up the proper dewormer for the type of worms he has and the right dose, and we're gonna get him treated. Properly identifying, controlling, and treating parasites can be one of the most difficult things that any goat or sheep owner has to deal with. If you're struggling with any of these issues in your own herd, I really hope this video helped you. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.